Roto World headlines. I just hope, I will say there are some people that have thought this is, this is about him trying to get cash infusion for a minority, you know, he's going to sell a minority portion of the team that he would still, meaning Daniel and Tanya Snyder, that they would still own the majority of the team and that they're just looking for a cash infusion to try to get uh, money to build a new stadium as they have so far been unsuccessful in convincing any government to work with them in terms of using public funds to build a stadium in either Maryland, Virginia, or the Washington, D.C. area. Um, I hope that's not the case, but I know some people have floated that as well. You know, feels, I will say this, it feels the most real it ever has, that there is a chance that there could be a ownership change in terms of the majority ownership of this team. Indeed. Uh, so right, let's, we will follow this story closely. Yes, we will. Okay, let's jump to the first headline, which is Jonathan Taylor. He's had this troublesome ankle for the past yeah. month or so now. He did not practice on Wednesday. He didn't play about that badly against the Commanders. 16 carries, 76 yards, just didn't get in the end zone as he hasn't for much of the season. What are you doing with the Jonathan Taylor situation? I assume Dion Jackson just needs to be rostered everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, a, a thousand percent. I mean, Dion Jackson, I, I tweeted this out yesterday, right? I mean, look, it's not a great schedule. You don't love the matchup on the road at New Orleans. They're, you know, top 12 against the run over the last four weeks. Having said that, just, you know, massive uh, workload for Deion Jackson in the two games that Jonathan Taylor missed, right? You know, over 17 touches, over 90 total yards, 20.6 fantasy points per game is what Deion Jackson averaged in weeks five and six. And so, you know, with Naheem Hines now in Buffalo, there's a 12% target share. There's almost seven touches a game that are up for grabs here. Now, Deion Jackson's production in the passing game came with Matt Ryan under center. Sam Ellinger is now the starting quarterback of the Colts. So we'll see, you know, if he's going to be dumping off as much as Matt Ryan is. Ellinger more mobile, so he doesn't, he doesn't need to get rid of the ball. He's got other ways to, you know, um, avoid pressure uh, that Ryan did not. But, yeah, I mean, I think he's, he's absolutely – he must be rostered because – this is an aggravation of the same injury that he's had previously, JT's. Yeah, I think that if, if Jackson is the guy, then he's basically a locked-in RB2. I think you said the other new team, uh, Jonathan Taylor and the Colts, if Taylor is playing, they played the Patriots this week. Yeah, that's, uh, did I not say that? I, I thought said I said New Orleans. And oh, then, sorry, New, I meant New England. So yes. the Patriots, they are five-and-a-half-point favorites in that game, and yes, they've been a bit better against the run, but overall in the season, they haven't been great. So uh, I think that Deion Jackson must roster, must start if Taylor misses. Let's talk about quarter. They, they don't have really anyone with Hines no, gone. Like no it's one. just you're right. No I mean, one. like Philip Lindsay, like whatever. Yeah. I mean, like it's it'll be the Deion Jackson show in Indy if Jonathan Taylor misses time again. The fact that he, you know, um, the fact that he missed Wednesday practice. It's still Wednesday practice, but it is uh, it is an eyebrow. Also, raise. not good that he had to leave the game on the weekend against the Commanders, then comes back in these high ankle sprains. They just tend to linger. Yeah, they really do. I mean, Irv, a different injury, but Irv Smith with a high ankle sprain out eight to ten weeks. You'd see the toll that it can take. Let's go to Cordero Patterson at Atlanta. He was designated to return to practice. He I think it's Cordero. Or is this one of your re renaissance I don't think I can get away with the Australian pronunciation on that. I, I might just be saying it wrong. It's like Devonta and Devonte Smith. I feel like society is completely split yeah. on Devonta Devonte, and so everyone just goes with what they want and they ride with it. It's the is it the fantasy football version of the of the um, of the gold dress versus the black dress. You remember that yes, whole internet yes, thing that yes. was going on? Blue, yeah, blue dress, dress versus yeah. the gold dress, right? Exactly. Exactly. But um, anyway, I believe it's Cordero Patterson. Cordero Patterson. Yeah. Uh, so he returned to practice. Uh, and he hasn't played since week four, but in his three full games, he produced like a madman. Uh, but now he's got Caleb Huntley, Tyler Algier to compete with. Is Patterson startable if he's back this week? I think he is. He told reporters he feels about 90% there. Um, over the last four weeks, there's only one team in the NFL that's giving him more rushing yards per game than the Los Angeles Chargers. And so it's a good matchup against a, a team, you know, with a team in the Atlanta Falcons who wants to run. It does not matter what the score is. It does not matter what down or distance it is. They're going to run. They're going to keep running. And, and so Cordero Patterson, who earned 18 or more touches in two of the three full games he played so far this year, will lead that committee. You'll see some Tyler Algier and some Caleb Huntley. But, yes, I, my expectation is if you start a Falcons running back this weekend and Cordero Patterson is active, Patterson is the guy you want. Remember, over the last four games, Falcons – 137 rushing attempts.
Yeah, 137 in four games. Yeah, I think we're in this world now where previously you would look at, okay, the yeah. Falcons are underdogs or whatever, and you expect game script to get out of hand. Now there are like multiple teams who just run the ball independent of game script. The Titans do it with Derrick Henry. Uh, obviously the Falcons, the Bears do it as well. They're just going to run the ball because right. that's their that's and, their offense. And, and I think the Texans are going to do it tonight yeah. against the uh-huh. Philadelphia Eagles because that brings us to another quick headline here. Um, I'm going out of order here for a second, Stephen, but I don't want to blow this, that amazing segue <laughs> yeah. that I just did. Can't which is that, uh, Reports coming out just before we went on the air that Brandon Cook's unlikely to play tonight for the Texans. He hasn't practiced all week, Jay. That inclu- And we already know Nico Collins is not going to play. Yeah. So may I just quickly read to you um, uh, the wide receiver depth chart for the Houston Texans. Chris Moore, Philip Dorsett, Tyron Johnson, and Bo McDingleberry. Okay. One of those guys I made up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I mean, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a pick between Bo McDingleberry uh, and Tyron Johnson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not ideal. But, right, so my expectation here is that with, you know, going on the road at Phil – oh, I'm games in Houston, sorry. But just playing a very good Eagles defense uh, that – you know, has just smothered every team they've played. And now you're, you know, it's a passing offense in tech in Houston that has been inconsistent this year to be kind. Yes. My expectation is, is that, you know what they've got going for him, Damian Pierce yep. and a lot of it. We'll talk about some bad MGM props later in the show, but Damian Pierce, 65 and a half, his rushing yards over under 15 and a half carries. I think they, they both sail over even if they're losing. And, and teams have been able to run on Philadelphia. Yes, I mean, we, 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 you know, we, we saw the, the Cowboys do it a couple of weeks ago as well. For, last four weeks, believe it or not, the Eagles 25th against the run. And so I think you see a heavy, heavy dose of Damian Pierce tonight. So they would be another team like the t- Titans, uh, like the Falcons that are just going to run regardless of, of game script because they just don't have a ton of confidence yep. in their passing attack. Another wide receiver injury, Keenan Allen with his niggling hamstring. He did not practice Wednesday, and here's Keenan Allen on that injury. You got to take it day by day, and, um, you know, when it's ready to come back, it'll be ready, and, um, you know, I'll be ready. I'll stay ready. You know, when I can play, I can play. Some weird stuff swirling around Keenan Allen, saying he got got worse during the bye, saying also before the bye that he kind of didn't really want to, he wanted to wait through the bye. Uh, and it's just, these injuries should not linger like this. And really, it's been the entire season for Keenan Allen. So what are we doing with the Chargers situation? I mean, we're starting Josh Palmer, like friend of the podcast, Austin Eckler, during the definitive Austin Eckler interview right here in the Fantasy Football Happy Hour, said as much, you want Josh Palmer. Big Mike Williams, he's not going to play for a few weeks as now. As it stands today, as we take, as we, you know, as we broadcast this on a Thursday afternoon, doesn't feel great. Bad vibes, as you will, coming from Keenan Allen and the Chargers camps about his availability. And so you think about this mass matchup against the Atlanta Falcons, uh, who um, uh, Atlanta uh, is 32nd against the pass over the last four weeks. Like literally, no team in the NFL gives up more passing yards per game over the last month. Then the Atlanta Falcons as well. A.J. Terrell once again likely out for that secondary in Atlanta. And there's a 20% target share that's up for good. Before you even get to Keenan Allen, Mike Williams vacates a 20% target share. We expect a lot of work for Josh Palmer. In the seven career games in which he's gotten at least six targets, Josh Palmer has over 13 fantasy points in six of those seven games here. You'll see some DeAndre Carter as well in this, and I like Gerald Everett as a tight end sleeper this week. But, yeah, give me Josh Palmer as a top 25 wide receiver uh, with Keenan Allen out. I think he becomes almost a must-start if both Allen and Williams are out. Yep. Falcons. And, by the way, he makes the love list. Yes. Falcons secondary, extremely banged up, so he should be able to feast. All right, let's jump into running back love-hate. But first, let's hear from Ramondre Stevenson, who features at the top of the list. Ramondre, what's the uh, significance of the jersey? Oh, this is Booby Miles from Friday Night Lights, my favorite my favorite movie, so I had to rep him today. <laughs> what, what, what led to that? Just, just something fun? Yeah, just something fun. Uh, you know, I always I love the movie. That's my favorite movie, top five for sure. So, just had to put it on today. Have mm-hmm. you watched the series? I did. Mm-hmm. I like the movie better though. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Andre Stevenson with the, I would say, controversial view that the movie Friday Night Lights is better than the TV show. I would go the other side of that. It is funny, and obviously it's a little meta, but the fact that he referenced that, 
in season three of Friday Night Lights, Matthew, J.D. McCoy and Matt Saracen, they had this quarterback controversy yeah. where uh, the coach was starting both of them and they mm. would alternate series. Bit of a Bailey Zappi, Mac Jones yes. type situation where our uh, film becomes reality. And uh, I don't think Ramondre was alluding to that so much, but he is on the love list. He's uh, trending right up. And what do you like him this week? Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose, exactly. Jay Croucher. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Love the Booby Miles jersey. And I love me some Ramondre Stevenson. Six consecutive games here, Jay Croucher, with at least 16 touches and over 80 yards from scrimmage. He's averaging over 20 fantasy points per game. He's my running back nine so far uh, in week number nine as well. Even since Damian Harris returned, it has still been the Ramondre Stevenson show with a 26% target share. He's had 131 receiving yards, 15 receptions over the last four weeks. Uh, you think about this matchup with the Indianapolis Colts, right? Indy is giving up the six most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs, whether it's Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones. And the expectation, obviously, is that it'll be Mac Jones on her center. The fact is, this is a run-heavy team, and Ramondre Stevenson has the majority of uh, work in this backfield for the Patriots. We talked about it in the preseason. I've, been, I've never wavered from this as well. Ramondre Stevenson is a special talent, and he's the guy that you want in this Patriots backfield. I had him ranked ahead of Damian Harris, which was unlike the opposite of the eight. That was the opposite of the ADP coming into the preseason. All in on Ramondre. Must start. Yep. Must start this week. Must start going forward. Particularly with how bad Mac Jones has looked all Dude. season long. He's been one of the five worst quarterbacks among NFL starters and has five and a half point favorites still against the Colts. Expect that they'll be running all day. Let's jump to Travis Etienne, who has now become the clear RB1 in Jacksonville with James Robinson gone. He's producing like an RB1 in fantasy as well the past two weeks. Why is he on the love list? Yeah, I mean, he, not only is he on the love list, but I mean, he's even higher than Ramondre Stevenson. We just didn't have video of Travis Etienne <laughs> yeah. in a Booby Miles jersey, so right. we flopped, we flip-flopped right. it a little bit. But he comes in as a top five running back for me, running back five for me in week eight. Look, over the last two weeks, without, uh, you know, um, over the last two weeks, over an 80% snap share, 84% uh, of the team's running back touches. James Robinson, now a member of the New York Jets, in his first game without J-Rob there, 27 touches for Travis Etienne. Four consecutive games with over 100 yards from scrimmage. And you love this matchup against the Raiders, right? Las Vegas allowing 115 scrimmage yards to a running back in each of the last two games. So Etienne, who's been such a big part of their, their offense going forward and the trade of James Robinson. Look, we like Jamaica, Jamichael Hasty, like he's a nice sure. little player, but like he ain't Travis Etienne. Like no. this is his backfield. We constantly look for bell cow running backs. They're so few and far between in fantasy, Jay. And Travis Etienne is one of them. Yeah, I'm not sure there are six more guys you'd want in fantasy at the running back position more than Travis Etienne the rest of the way. When Calvin Ridley gets there next year uh, with Travis Etienne, Trevor Lawrence is going to have no more excuses if he doesn't perform, uh, which he hasn't so far. Let's go to Aaron Jones, who's about the only good thing in the Packers' yep. offense at the moment. He really got going against Buffalo, despite the fact that they were losing the entire game. The Packers... And he's on the love list this week. Free Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, look, there's not much that's working in Green Bay, right? There isn't much. I mean, you know, look, the cheese is still good. You know, I hear good things about the brats. You but like pretty, the brats? Yeah, and I, I just hear good things about them. Yeah. I'm not a brat guy. I'm a big cheese curd guy. I spent a Are bit you? of time in Wisconsin, yeah. Yeah, Wait. me and uh, producer Stephen, we actually uh, went to a Brewers game and uh, devoured some cheese curds at the uh, Ryder Cup trip last year. It was fantastic. Huge on cheese curds. R really? really wow. good thing about Stephen America. Stephen in my ear saying he can confirm. <laughs> yeah, he can confirm. And uh, yeah, big on Brussels sprouts in America and cheese curds. Two things we don't really do in Australia. No. Anyway. Wow. That's that's so whatever. By the way, that's, that sounds like a bad children's show, Brussels sprouts <laughs> and cheese curds. Here's what I can tell you, though. Uh, one thing that you should like just as much, if not more, than Brussels sprouts and cheese curds is Aaron Jones, especially this week. He comes in at running That's back six ball. for me as well. Look, since week two, week two, this is a guy who's averaging over 17 touches a game over the last – and, you know, honestly, so much about the Packers offense isn't working, but he is, right? I mean, you saw the massive game Sunday night against the uh, Buffalo Bills as well, and that was against the Bills. Now he gets Detroit. Lions over the last four weeks allowing 131 rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. That's third most in the NFL. They're giving up over 95 scrimmage yards to a running back in five of the seven games they've played so far this year. He's a big part of the passing game. They want to run with him as well. I don't know why they, they don't seem to love A.J. Dillon, though he got, a little, he got going a little bit more. But if there's one thing you can trust in this Packers offense week in, week out, it's Aaron Jones. Him against Detroit, come on. 
get better than that. Running back six for me this week. Yeah, I like it. I think there's this idea that maybe the Packers' passing offense will finally get right against Detroit. It's not going to get right. If it was going to get right, it would have gotten right against your commanders or other teams along the road. There just isn't the talent uh, and the production out of the receivers, and Aaron Jones is the guy who should benefit the most. Let's quickly jump into some others receiving votes, headlined by the great Deonta Foreman. Now, he got a veteran day off yesterday. Chuba Hubbard returned to the lineup. So it remains to be seen if he's going to get the massive kind of workload that he got uh, with Chuba Hubbard out last week. But still, like, he's going to, you know, after what he did last week, you expect him to at least lead this committee against a Bengals defense that's giving up the ninth most rushing yards per game to opposing running back. He comes in at running back 17 for me. Foreman does. We already talked about the Packers game. Well, let's talk about the other side of that ball and Jamal Williams. DeAndre Swift did not practice yesterday. In the four games in which Swift has been active this week, even if Swift is act active, Jamal Williams has been productive, averaging 17.6 fantasy points per game in the four games DeAndre Swift has been active. No player in the NFL has more goal-to-go carries than Jamal Williams. And Khalil Herbert, right? I kind of like him. My man. He's had, he's had over 70 scrimmage yards in three straight games. He's had 43% of the team running back touches over the last two weeks compared to just 49% to David Montgomery. This is truly a, a, a split-down-the-middle committee. This offense has shown sign of light, signs of life under Justin Fields, and we think Herbert is the better running back, Jay. He's averaging 6.4 yards per touch compared to just 4.7 for David Montgomery. Yes, and David Montgomery highlights the hate section of this operation, and so I presume that that's basically just... With how Khalil Herbert is trending, how he performed against Dallas, it seems like Montgomery's probably trending the wrong direction. David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert is a perfect example of what the love-hate list is. Is because, yes, Khalil Herbert makes the love list on others receiving votes. Montgomery makes the hate list. And yet, if you go to my rankings, I have Montgomery two spots ahead yes. of Khalil Herbert because love-hate is all about expectations. I think Herbert has a better game than he's expected to. I think Montgomery has a worse game than he's expected to. But if I was rostering both guys, I would still start Montgomery more. He's running back 23 for me. Herbert's 25. Look, he's had only four more touches than Khalil Herbert over the last two weeks. He's had under 50% of the Bears running back touches. And this is not a great matchup against Miami as the Dolphins allow the eighth fewest rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Yep, I like that look. And uh, the Bears are five-point dogs at home to the Miami Dolphins. I might like Chicago in that spot. I just think the Bears, they're trending in the right direction as a team. We'll see what happens with the pass game because it has been they the pass game chase, as a weakness. just added Chase, So what, what is the line again? Bears plus five at home to Miami. I'm not sure Miami have earned the right to be five-point favorites at Chicago. Chicago team that's been offensively. Chicago is tough, that's been better offensively. I kind of like that call. Yeah. Bears plus five. Let's go Bears. Now, let's talk about... Clark. Your Bears. You love your Bears. I'm a Titans man now. Right. Yeah, because okay. of Derrick Henry and my Offensive Player of the Year bet at 30-1 to 1 on BetMGM. Let's talk about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, a staple of the hate list. Yeah, well, he's on here again. Well, he's facing your Titans. I yeah. mean, you, you know this, Jay. Like, I'm the Titans big, are yeah. a really good run defense, yes, we always right? have been. Right. Over have the been. last four weeks, they allow just 42 rushing yards per game and under three yards per carry to opposing running backs. This is a committee. Uh, Clyde edwards Lair, Isaiah Pacheco, and even Jarek McKinnon, who's actually been the guy who's led the Kansas City backfield in snaps in three straight games. Like, so... You're talking about a committee, you know, a three-headed monster against a very tough run defense, the number one run defense in the NFL over the last month. Yeah, I mean, he's outside my top 25 CEH as well. Honestly, um, uh, you know, if you're looking, I'm st I would still start CEH over this guy, but just as long as we're talking Chiefs, Titans, I just want to mention real quickly, Dontrell Hilliard, for, if you're yeah. truly desperate, sort of interesting here. He's actually second on the Titans in both target share and receiving yards, and the Chiefs have allowed the most receiving yards and the most receptions to opposing running backs this year. So Dontrell Hilliard could be kind of a sneaky, deep league start. I'm desperate. I need a guy that, you know, could get me eight points with a chance at a touchdown. Yeah, mustache as well. Derrick oh. Henry, uh, limited participant in practice with that foot, which isn't ideal, particularly when he's had Ooh. 28 carries a minimum the past three weeks. Uh, with that workload, you're always a little bit concerned about King Henry. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, 
fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.